Bullying seems to be a culture that is rife in South African schools. A recent survey has shown that 57% of school children claim they have been bullied at school. There has been growing concerns from parents and other educational stakeholders about the continued violence among school, school pupils. Bullying doesn't only affect learners and teachers, but also families and in the wider community at large. Research has shown that bullying, when left unaddressed, can lead to more serious acts of violence. And in some severe cases, victims are even driven to suicide or murder. Now, to help us decode bullying, we are joined in our studios uh, by Lizette van Hastien, who is an expert in childhood development. Very good morning to you, Lizette. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure, thanks. Your organization is called Practica, is that right? Yes. The thing that I'm worried about is that I see a trend developing, not just in schools, but across our society. Uh, the bullying that we see in our schools, is this a reflection of the society that we live in? Well, um, bullying is really not more prevalent at the moment than it used to be 10, 50 or 100 years ago. It's just better reported. But um, on the other hand, there are certain factors that do contribute to bullying, like being disconnected, not having open channels of communication, and having a low self-esteem, and all these things do contribute to this trend. And yes, so the answer would be yes. You know, things are escalating at the moment. Bloomberg released a report last week that says South Africa is the second most stressed society on the planet. That's of all people in the world, we're the second most stressed, only behind Nigeria, and they've got a civil war going on in their country. The kinds of pictures that we see on social media all the time, and I suppose this is what you see all the time, is this a, a reflection of, of what's happening in the home? Or, or, or is it, as you say, w what are the underlying factors to this kind of behavior? Well, basically, a bully um, is somebody who is hurting. Somebody who is hurting hurts others. And there are also people who don't have a very high emotional EQ. So um, if you don't have an, uh, you know, a sensitivity for the feelings of other people, if you have a misconception of what's happening around you, if you take things personally, if something that is a neutral event mm -hmm. you take as an attack, then that's, and it's the only way that you know how to deal with, you know, that, that you have to deal with conflict. It makes it difficult to be patient and to be accommodating. So, yes, bullying doesn't only have a negative effect on the person who is bullied, but also the bully himself mm. is um, um, affected by this. So, yes, bullies, um, in almost 70% um, of them, actually have their first conviction, um, criminal conviction, before the age of 24. So it's a reality. What are the... Very stressful. the what are the you, you, what are the long term effects of those that are being bullied? Here we see pictures, those famous from a couple of years ago, of of uh, a, a young a young boy uh, attacking a, sc a school teacher. Kids that are being bullied in school. What is the long term effects on the victim? Well, studies that we've done that was done in America um, with grade five children who were then tracked up to grade ten showed that them, not only did they have more emotional problems, but they all, were also physically not as healthy as other children. They have sleep problems. They have problems with, um, you know, their self-esteem. In general, they have more stressed lives. So stress leads to bullying, as you rightly said, and then bullying leads to stress. It's a very negative cycle. So. Um, the negative effects are long term and the longer the bullying, the period of the bullying, the more intense the effect. So the key to, to solve the problem is to get everything into the light. Mm. Bullying is very much like mold. If you keep it in the dark, it flourishes. If you bring it into the light, it kills it. Well, what then should parents do? The parents of the victim? And then also the parents of the perpetrator of acts of bullying, because I think that's probably more important. See, there are actually many people involved in this scenario. It's the bully, the person who is bullied, and the onlookers as well, and all of their parents. So, you know, being open to the signs of bullying, being open to the fact that your child might actually be a bully, and it doesn't reflect that you've done anything wrong or that you haven't created a, a sanctuary for your child. Or that it, sometimes it's an onlooker mm -hmm. who is now afraid of being bullied, and is then also bullying. So, you know, we have to just be open to the fact that these are realities and we have to deal with it and, in, you know, not deny the, the prevalence of it. So, 
what parents can do is first start off while your child is very little by being a mind-minded parent. Mm -hmm. Talk to your child about their feelings. What do you think about this? How do you feel about that? What are your, you know, what do you prefer, your preferences? If you're mind-minded, if you, you talk to your child as if they have feelings and opinions, they experience themselves like that. They also see feelings and opinions in other people. So it's easier for them to, to realize that something is not acceptable, that somebody else can be hurting. So that's the first thing. Open up that channel of talking about feelings. And then also read to your child. When you read to your child and you talk about the feelings of the characters in the story, they not only realize their own feelings, but they also realize that other people can have feelings and that you as a parent are very open to talking about feelings. So it makes it easier for them to be open. Everything that you can do to help your child to be open and come forward with mm. things that are hurting, that, that's, that's the solution. So it comes down to Performance in schools, the same thing. Just be involved in your child's education. Be, a, child's be a role player in your child's life. Yes. And uh, be available. Uh, you know, often children are very afraid to even speak about their fears and the things that trouble them. More, they're more often scared of the, the, the response of the parent than they are of being bullied. That is, it is quite an eye-opener. So it's important that everybody in this whole scenario gets support. Not only the children, but also the parents, because they need to know how to handle the situation. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. The Z van Hastian uh, is an expert in childhood development. We're talking about bullying, the scourge that is bullying that seems to be on the increase on the, in schools. The Z tells us that it's just better reported these days. And in the time of social media, I suppose that is the case with everything around in our society. Now let's take a look at our tweet of the day. This one comes from Joy Smith. It is by standing up for the rights of girls and women that we truly measure up as men. She quotes Desmond Tutu there, uh, of course. This is a hashtag human trafficking. Now, I can tell you that uh, we'll be dealing with human trafficking after the break. Of course, there's a film that is premiering here in South Africa on Friday. Uh, it's called Eight Days and it's dealing with this emotive issue of human trafficking and you'll be a, you'll be surprised where it's happening and how it's happening but now let's take a look